Anyway, what's inside that bottle is gonna prove to you just how evil Dahlia Hawthorne truly is. After that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. <laughs> a strange girl asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Now, what you're about to see is part of what makes Dahlia Hawthorne extremely evil. Pay very close attention to this, everyone, as I am not going to show it again. In fact, I'm actually going to save. So you guys can actually pay very close attention to this. One, two, three, go. Murder in the courthouse. Bingo. Hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I need to finish this myself. Now. Take a look at this. Very little information is being disclosed at this time. Since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who is sitting with the victim. Now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. The next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. Prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Trust me, that is nothing more than an act.
What is your full name and occupation? That part we're, we're gonna ignore. Before I continue, something I want you to take a look at. Take a look at what Dahlia is holding in her left hand. That's actually going to be very important. It's more than enough, Witness. I won't allow this to continue. Please. Let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. Yes, we've met before, once. Don't forget what I stated before. This is nothing more than an act. Now, unless I'm mistaken, Mr. Wright is in the art department. If that's the case, then what were you doing by the pharmacology building? Japanese Sinryu poetry. Hmm. That is true. It is indeed a satirical style of haiku. So, 
What were Mr. Swallow and Mr. Wright talking about anyway? Just collapsed on his own? In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? If I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? I am not badgering the witness. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Roy did indeed push the victim. There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the truth. Finally, getting somewhere. You didn't see it? And at that time, there were the two of them at the scene the defendant, Phoenix Wright, and the victim, Doug Swallow. So then what did it look like they were doing to you? <laughs> did you notice anything out of the ordinary at all? say students, you mean students from the pharmacology department? Please try to stay on topic. So to find some pharmacology students, you went to the lab, right? Students who knew what was going on? Mm. That seems fishy to me.
Ah ah. Pharmacology students, they have nothing they have nothing to do with the incident. I think what I need more what I, what I need is more information about Dahlia herself. That girl, she's tell, telling a super obvious lie and she knows it. She's just, just pretending to protect Mr. Wright. Yes, it's gotta be it. Gotta dig deep to find a contradiction on this one. Hmm. Something does not fit. Objection, Your Honor. You say you didn't hear anything unusual. Is that correct? Uh-uh. That's nice, but I find that just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? Objection, Objection Your Honor. According to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise, like a snap. No way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Thunderstorm, huh? Hmm. Oh, I don't buy it. She's definitely telling a lie. Now here's an interesting question, everyone. What exactly does come out of a lightning strike? Answer? Electricity! Your Honor, there is a problem with the witness's testimony. Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere. Am I right? Uh-uh. Anyway. 
Since the cause of death was electrocution, is it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Dugswall was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray lightning bolt. Exactly. Sure about that, Mr. Payne? No lightning strikes, huh? Hmm. Alright, where is this evidence? Who is this affidavit from? Former college students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. <clears throat> All equipment in the lab lost power all of a sudden at around 3 p.m. that day. Is that a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because the severed electrical cable. Power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Yes, I know that. And also, if you actually look at the victim's wristwatch, you can actually see that it says 3 p.m. What we don't know, though, is was the victim actually killed at 3 p.m.? Or was he killed earlier or later? That is what we don't know yet. Which actually brings me to my next question. Who actually pushed the victim into the severed electrical cable? If it was not Mr. Mr. Wright, then who was it? That is what we don't know. Apparently, the cables have become so brittle that even the smallest bump could have caused them to break. Hmm. The old cable... The old power cable broke due to some sort of impact on April 9th of two, at 2.55 p.m. Wait a minute! It doesn't match with the time of the murder. Time and cause of... D date and time of death was 3 p.m. If the victim... If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have been... It wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Hmm. 
One moment, everyone. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in Mr. Wright's uh, timeline. In other words... It was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. No. No, 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 no. Objection, Your Honor. I'm afraid I can't agree, I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right. The victim banged into the pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no. It doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed cable in the foreground here. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. First time I was into the electrical pole, that's when the cable broke. Okay, that part that part I can buy. Okay, I'm not buying that. After being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. That's when the defendant pushed him for the second time. No. He would have stated that in the testimony. No. <laughs> no.
No. No. I don't buy it. Gladly, your honor. I'm gonna take this evil witch down if it's the last thing I do. Miss Hawthorne. Previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Doug. So that's why you basically lied to the court? And if it... And for anyone who is actually familiar with... With the court or criminal justice, that is perjury, which is a felony. That's perjury! No. No, 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 no. Alright, 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 alright. He better be more careful himself. Dark Alley is friendlier than that girl. You're saying you actually saw the victim get pushed into the electrical pole? Mm. Oh, really? get this straight. You were happily listening to, to music on your headphones while you watch the scene unfold? I am not badgering the witness, Mr. Payne. Now shut up and let me continue my cross-examination. Cheer them on. What do you mean by that? No, I'm not buying it. That doesn't sound quite right. There were handprints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, were there also prints found on the back of his leather jacket? Bingo! There were no fingerprints on the back, just on the front. Huh? Okay. So it's possibly tripped. Still though, if the victim was actually wearing a leather jacket, and even by accident, he actually tripped and fell into the victim, that still would, if he had his hands up, that still would have left fingerprints. But oh, if he had his hands up, though, and was actually trying to push him intentionally, then yes, he would actually leave Prince. Hmm. Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? Hmm. 
she didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so this is my best chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Objection, Your Honor. That's enough, witness. You will in a minute. Can you please take a look at this picture? <laughs> it's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's a wristwatch. Stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Bingo. You care to explain the to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? What exactly happened during the 10 minute interval? The defense proposes that it was during that interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Objection, Your Honor. Even you can't deny that the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene was there a window of opportunity for the real killer. Oh, yes. Yes, Your Honor, we are ready. Oh, I will not choose the wrong person. <laughs> Bam! Can only be you! Dahlia Hawthorne! Sure about that? Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing the entire time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them on as they fought? 
I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However... After Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. <laughs> well, I owe you one, Miss Hawthorne. What? No. Uh-uh. Nope. Beautiful. Okay. Good. Now, let's take a look at it, shall we? Right here. Incident overview. Location, District Courthouse Cafeteria. Date and time, August 27th, 4 p.m. Victim, Diego Armando, age 28. Occupation, lawyer. Suspect, suspect, Dahlia Hawthorne, age 19. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in in the vicinity or on the victim's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. BAM! This is exactly what I was talking about before. I did say that Dahlia Hawthorne is one of the most evil characters in gaming. And this is what I was referring to. Well, one only one of the things. Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swallow, but you also tried to pin the entire thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead with your fake tears, Dahlia. <laughs> no. There's actually a little secret about Dahlia. Well, a, cu a couple of secrets. I'm not gonna reveal what they are, though, until much later in the game, though. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in this in the basement cafeteria of this very building. And then, that same day, the two of them accidentally met. Quote. 
Your Honor. The defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Objection! Objection, Your Honor. The witness claims that she has no reason for freeing the defendant. Am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia Hawthorne. Now, you see that necklace that Phoenix is actually wearing? You're probably wondering what's inside of it. Well, uh, that is what we're gonna find out. I know what's in it, but I'm not gonna reveal it yet. Now we enter the final act of our little drama. <laughs> so until that time, you had been dating Doug Squall? reading room? That's a strange place to make the love of your life. <laughs> Honest to God, I actually don't find that strange at all. People have actually met their loved ones in much stranger places. I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a liter what was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue on with her testimony. Hmm. You're writing a paper on what? Underworld.
Yes. No, I have not forgotten the police report. I'm getting to that. So what was it about Mr. Wright that made your heart malfunction like that? In my personal opinion, he looked just like a typical Sinati Nose College brat. What? Now, I should mention this. At this time in the game, me it's only 23. So technically, she's only she's only three years older than Dahlia. Perhaps to you, Miss Hawthorne, but to the rest of the planet, he's a dime a dozen. That is true, Mr. Payne. Love does work in mysterious ways. feelings between you and Mr. Swallow? That can't be. You sure? So the victim wanted to break up with her? I better back off on that one. What did the victim think of Dahlia Hawthorne? Well, I guess I don't have to think about that right now. Yes, I know that. Garbage. Plain and simple garbage. Objection, Objection Your Honor. Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a more important reason? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Bingo! The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. 
That name is Dahlia Hawthorne. Yes, the sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. So, you're not getting me with that, Mr. Payne. about that, Mr. Payne? I'm terribly sorry. But I'm afraid the defense has plenty more tricks up its sleeve today. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Discussing with the defense attorney. He interviewed regarding another case. Incident errors caught up in when I was younger. Why don't you tell us all what that incident was? Very well. You get involved with a lot of incidents, don't you, Miss Hawthorne? No. That is called protection. False protection. One moment, everyone. 